Tonight's adventure into Cigar Land is the, uh, you recognize the band, is the Gurkha Legend. The cigar is six, six inches long and about three quarters in diameter. As usual, a very good smell. This this cigar should should be rated in the 90s. Hmm, very enjoyable. And I'll give you a little description of the cigar. The Gurkha Legend. The rarest of cigars from Gurkha. A seven-year-old Connecticut broadband leaf wrapper aged and fermented to the highest peak of maturity. Only 800 boxes produced a year for the world consumption. These medium to heavy flavored strength cigars are very complex and robust. Recommended only for the true experienced cigar aficionados. Well, I don't know if I call myself a cigar aficionado, but if I am a cigar aficionado, I am a shirtless one. So uh, we will uh, start the engine on this and see how it goes. Well, it's a very nice draw. And a extra smooth and light taste. Lit up fast. And I think so far this will be an enjoyable cigar. The only thing I don't like about it is the band is too close to the end. So you end up, uh, got to be careful, getting paper in your mouth when you're smoking it. And it does not move very well. So I have to live with that. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good. Well, this uh, Gurkha Legend is a terrific smoke. Smooth drawing and smooth tasting. So, while we're here, I'm going to tell you a story about my, uh, it was like a 1952 or 1954 Studebaker. Well, I got this from my brother-in-law for fifty dollars and we're gonna take this car my wife and I were gonna take this car from South Florida to Detroit which is about a three-day trip well I found out after I got the car that it had no reverse in it and it had no spare tire but you know when you're young who needs a spare tire to go anywhere and who needs reverse gear so I took the car to uh, my father-in-law's body shop. And as a favor, he was going to paint it for us. That was his business, paint and body work. So he did a beautiful job. Knocked out the dents, covered the rust with Mondo, and painted it white. The car was gorgeous when we got it. And I want to see if I can include a picture of a 52 or... 54 Studebaker in this. So the car is perfect looking, even though it's a $50 car. It's perfect looking. So we leave for Detroit and we get about 200 miles north and suddenly the hood flies up. Well, I guess I didn't lock the hood down completely and the wind caught it and just bent the hood right up. So now after this, all this beautiful body work and paint job, I got a bent hood. So we pull over in a little picnic spot, and my wife uh, made lunch, the, the bologna sandwiches of that day. And I took the hood off. I had some tools. I undid the bolts, took the hood off, and I found a curb stone, you know, those half-moon curb stones. And I laid the hood on the ground, and I beat the hood out with the curb stone. 
so I could get it to lock back on the car. So I reattached after doing that, eating lunch, and uh, uh, putting the hood back on and it locked again. We took off. Well, we made it all the way to Detroit. And I was on the uh, John Lodge Expressway. Oh, by the way, I want to tell you, at that time, in the early 60s, there was no I-75 or no uh, interstates going north. It was all two lanes as far as you could go. So anyways, we're in Detroit, and I'm on the John Lodge Expressway, and traffic suddenly slows down. I slow down, and a guy slams me in the rear end. I mean, busted the, the rear end up really bad on the car. So we're in the road. We're, we're not living there. We're out of town. So I come to a, a, an agreement with the guy. He gives us $20 for the damage that he did because I didn't have any insurance and he didn't have any insurance. So now I got a, a busted hood all wrinkled up and a bashed in rear end. So uh, we spent about a week in Detroit and I had to, and we were in the downtown area and every time I wanted to park I had to drive around the block about three or four times to wait for a spot big enough that I could get into because I had no reverse gear. So after uh, staying in Detroit, we started coming home to South Florida. And uh, my alternator light would come on. Well, I don't know if it was a light or maybe a gauge, but anyways, the alternator quit working. And I knew if that alternator quit working, we ain't gonna last long because we'd be running on the battery. Then suddenly, the alternator would come on and the battery would charge. And for 1,500 miles heading back to South Florida, this alternator would come on and go off. Come on and go off. And we're really sweating this thing whether we're going to make it back. So we pulled up to uh, her father's shop and uh, we told him the problems we had with the alternator. For three days and 1,500 miles, he opened up the hood and he found that the uh, one of the wires was loose. And he just tightened it up and that solved the problem. Anyways, he looked at the car, the beautiful paint job he gave us, and uh, the body work, and he saw a smashed up hood and a smashed up rear end. So <laughs> this is what happened after uh, just uh, a week or so of traveling with the car. So that's my uh, 52, 54 Studebaker story. But I did love that car. It was a sleek body and a very low to the ground. Of course, in Florida, the car being very low to the ground wasn't much of an advantage because all the heat from the road come right up through the car. And this was the days before air conditioning. Well, maybe some people had air conditioned cars, but I was not in that economic bracket. So I will continue with my uh, Gurkha legend. I'll enjoy it as low down as I can smoke it. This is what a 1954 Studebaker looks like today, restored in pristine condition. Pretty good looking car. Down to the last couple inches of the Gurkha Legend. A real pleasure. This is uh, rated in the 90s, I'd get, definitely give this 92, 94. This is very close to uh, Cohiba. The only reason it doesn't beat a Cohiba is the distinctive flavor that the Cohiba has. But I highly recommend the Gurkha Legend, a real pleasurable smoke. I don't want to let this one go. I just might burn my fingers before I finish it.